Hi everybody, I'm Evil Mog. I'm here to talk to you about NTLM version 1 reversing to NTLM and then creating silver tickets. I apologize, this originally was titled How to Run Insane Active Directory Attacks, but I'll be honest, I ran out of time with other work-related projects and didn't get enough time to record this one, so I apologize, I'm going with my backup talk. You know, you send a comments to me at Twitter, and I sincerely apologize. However, this is actually a very useful attack, so let's get started. I'm going to, first a little bit of myself, I'm a member of Team Hashcat, I have a bunch of black badges, and I've presented at a bunch of conferences. I don't really matter, the attack does. So, based on that, we are going to talk about the NTLM version 1 packet, or the NTLM version 1 attack. So to start off with, we, we have to talk about prerequisites. We start off with a regular user credential. This could be a domain user um, and doesn't really require any special privileges. And what happens is you as the attacker are going to send a printer request, the MSRPRN um, print spooler RPC service effectively, to the domain controller. The domain controller is going to send you a list of the printers and that list of printers you can actually force the domain controller to authenticate to you as its machine account at least up to server 2016. Now, depending on the Active Directory settings in the group policy, you can force downgrade this to an NTLM version 1 response. Now, the group policy setting that sets or that configures this is in the Computer Configuration, Windows Settings, Security Settings, Local Policies, Security Options, or in this particular register key, which is the H key Local Machine, System, Current Control Set, Control, LSA, LM Compatibility Level. The versions that are vulnerable to this attack are here. These are or these have been set by CS benchmarks for over a decade, but they still pop up in earlier um, domains that have been migrated. So, le level zero, one, and two. Level zero allows Landman and NTLM version one responses only and does not support NTLM version two at all. Most domains should not be on this level. The majority should be on either level one or two. Um, if they've been migrated and have legacy clients. The only difference on level one is it enables NTLM version two if negotiated. And then number two disables Landman completely. Um, and they'll use NTLM version one with NTLM version two session security, otherwise known as SSP, which is what we're gonna talk about today, how to break SSP. So the NTLM version one packet looks a little bit like this. In here, you have your host name, or you actually you have your machine or your user account name and Active Directory, which in this case is the host name with a dollar sign. That's how you know it's a machine account. We have the domain name, we have the LM response field, we have the NT response field, and we have the client challenge. Now the important part about this is we're going to talk about how to break SSP. So an SSP packet looks a little bit more like this. Um, so you notice here how we have all those zeros, trunk, or remove those zeros, the first 16 characters will be your landman response. You have your client challenge, which is your client nonce. You want to combine them together to create the combined challenge. The space here is just here for readability. And then you run MD5 on those, on that combined challenge, and take the first 16 characters. Okay, fairly easy enough. What we're going to do is go straight into a demo now of how all this works and what you can do with it. So the first thing you need to do is you need to look up the domain security identifier. The domain SID can be found using the impacket tools. So we're going to run Python 3, look up SID.py, mog slash evil mog at mog.local, and we're going to specify my target IP because my DNS is probably messed up, 192.168.1.3. Now, it's asking for my password. My password in this case is password exclamation mark and it is not an admin in any way, and I'm going to demo that in a sec. But first, the domain SID is this numeric identifier right here. We're going to use this later. Now, I'm going to validate that this is not an admin account. SMB 192.168.1.3, tech U, evil mog, tech P, password, exclamation mark. See, not an admin, so there's nothing up my sleeve. So the first thing we're going to do now, or the next thing we're going to run, is we're going to run responder. Responder tac i eth0-wrf fp 
All right, now it's going to go ask me for. Uh, now notice here how we set a client challenge. This client challenge is one one two two three three four four five five six six seven seven eight eight. That client challenge is about to get modified. So we're going to run the uh, printer bug tool in the KRBX repo. So Python three printer bug mog at evil mog at one and or mog slash my domain name evil mog at 192.168.1.3 and we're gonna give it my return IP of 192.168.1.128. It's gonna ask us for a password. Why did that not work? Let's try this again. All right, yep, mog at mog, dot, there we go. Here's my component, that should work. Yeah, that looks right. Yeah, it's a SWRD, exclamation mark. There we go, it replied. So you'll notice here that the client challenge looks the same, but we're not gonna be able to crack with that. So we're gonna copy all of this we're going to go into my NTLM version 1 multi-tool. So Python 3, NTLM v1.py, tech tech, NTLM. We do our paste. We're also going to specify the hashcat directory. Now, in my case, I have two hashcat directories because I have a hashcat for holding all my hashcat distros, then a most recent one for git along with various version numbers. So that's why this looks like git slash hashcat slash hashcat. If I can type. Also specify our hashcat utilities directory, so hcutils um, is going to be tilde slash git slash hashcat dash utils slash src. Yeah, I don't put my binaries in the request location, they're all in the source, but that is all right. So now what this tool returns out is it will give you the information that it used to calculate your new challenge. So it will say here's your client challenge, your landman response, your new combined challenge, which is your client challenge combined with the service challenge. And here's the response of the MD5. Okay, cool. We can also go calculate the final four characters of our NTLM hash. Doesn't do as much good without the others, but it will tell us the last four. That's nice and handy. So now we're gonna go RM or 14,000.hash. We're going to copy the output straight from the tool. Now, to crack this with Hashcat, you're going to need about, let's call it three days with 16 GTX 1080s to get the 50% mark. Um, my case, I'm on my old little Mac, so that's not going to be an option. However, I already have this pre-cracked because we can save us some time. Um, you can also use crack.sh, and we output the crack.sh tokens. But for this purpose, we are going to tell it 14,000.hash. Use a device one because GPUs on Macs don't necessarily work. And we are now going to go into des.canned. All right, let's see if this cracks. See these big yellow warnings? Do not use force because they will find out if you've used force. All right, so this is now magically cracked our um, hashes. Now what gets returned here is a des key, not an NTLM hash. So what we need to do is go into git, hashcat utils slash src slash des key to NTLM. Nice little script written by Adam. Thank you very much. That makes my life easy. So first half of the uh, NTLM hash second half of the NTLM hash, and now we have the third part of the NTLM hash. So the NTLM hash looks like this, part one, part two, part three. Now we're gonna export this for the purposes of generating our secret stone. So we go cancel this out, we go export NT hash equals, and we remove the spaces, and to validate this is real, smb192.168.1.3, tac u, dc1 dollar sign, tac h, dollars nt hash.
Fantastic. We have a nice and shiny login failure. Alrighty, that means I messed this up in the particular order, which is bad. So let's go take a look, see what I missed on my copy and paste. We have my D, CDF, A58. Yeah, that looks all nice and right. So that means I obviously screwed something up. So, did my hash recently change? Maybe. Let's find out. Uh, fgrep dc1 from tilde slash dot cme slash log slash star dot mtds. Interesting. Well, that's why I copied the wrong components out. I messed up. My apologies. So, I, for, I copied these portions. That was my screw up. So, one, two, A58, three. See, even pros make mistakes, and that is absolutely all right. NT hash equals. Ding, ding, ding. All right, let's go retry the crack to verify I'm correct. There we go. I did this correctly now. So what I messed up here was you need to copy from this inside the hex and this inside the hex. I copied from my wrong line on ZSH. All right, cool. So what can you do with the dumb account now? It's not giving me admin. It just says I have a valid hash. Well, with that, next, we need to go generate ourselves a silver ticket. So for that, we're going to use the ticketer tool. So we're going to go dot slash ticketer dot py. If I can type, or sorry, we're going to go Python. Let's go dot slash, yeah, dot slash ticketer. Because my shebangs should be correct. Go dash nt hash, dollars nt hash, dash domain taxid. It's going to be dollar sign SID. We're going to go domain mog dot local. Now we're going to set the service principal name. In this case, dash SPN is going to be host slash the domain controller machine name dot mog dot local. Now I know for a fact my administrator in this case is named administrator, but you can be any user on this machine. So if you want to be a particular admin, you'd enter in their username here. Administrator. Yes, kill cool. check. So now, this is going to create your ticket. You now need to export that so that Secret Stump can use it. So in my case, we're going to run export krb5 ccache name slash root slash impact at examples administrator dot ccache. All right, that's nice and easy. Now let's go take out the domain controller. So with that, we're going to use Secret Stump. And because I need to go specify target dash IP 192.168.1.3. So First thing we do is we run secret stump, administrator at dc1.mog.local, dash k, which means use the Kerberos ticket, tack no tack pass, means don't ask for the password, and we're specifying the target IP in this case. And we will see what happens when it goes to dump. There we go. Here it is. It's dumping the entire domain. So it specifies here we have the administrator accounts from when this thing was first built. We have our default passwords, and the entire domain has now just been dumped. If you want to run it again, there you are. So basically, let's talk through what just happened now. Bear with me. So the settings that will fix this, the important part is if you want to stop this attack, we go to our settings too. So back to that original registry component, if you set an LM compatibility level of 5 and disable Landman and NTLM completely, this will stop the domain controller from replying back with an NTLM version 1 response. This should be set as a default setting as NTLM version 1 has been effectively broken since the late 90s, early 2000s. Second, we were able to brute force des keys. NTLM, unfortunately, was dead. It's just the way it works. Um, you can do a des key now in less than 24 hours with less than $1,000 in cloud or even cheaper. Like, you know, for example, they use um, 
the FPGAs by crack.sh. So that's the important part about this. Um, again, this was discovered by Lee Christensen, and the tools we used were KRB Relay X as well as the MSRPRN tool. And if you want to get access to the multi tool, it can be found at my GitHub repo, github.com slash evilmog slash ntlmv1.multi. One other cool feature I just want to bring up that was just recently added to the NTLM version 1 multi tool, once we get back to here, if you specify dash JSON 1, it will output everything in JSON. So it will tell you how to do your crack um, in the CT3 crack option, and there's going to be a crack.sh token field that gets output right here that you can then later use. So if you want to just extract just that J or just that component, you can specify dot uh, crack sh, and the only output from JQ will be just that token for you. You paste that into crack.sh, pay your $200, wait a couple of days, you get the results back. So thank you very much for listening to my talk. Um, again, I have been Evil Mog. Oops, uh, I've been Evil Mog. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter. I have zero problem answering further questions. And with that, I'll turn it over to the live questions. Thank you all very much.